Good morning, everyone. Here we are on a Friday morning, such an action-packed week. We we're very excited that yesterday we had a 60-vote margin in victory for the CHIPS bill. We had 100% voting from the Democratic side. And once we got to 218, a large number of Republicans voting as well, which was encouraging because we always worked on this as a bipartisan bill, six of the bills at least six of the bills in the package were Republican bills. Many of the others are bipartisan. Uh, it's very exciting. It's going to be it's transformative in terms of how it, it, it enables America to reassert itself as preeminent in the world. Uh, it's called the Chips and Science Act, and I'm very pleased with that because maybe more than a, a week or ten days ago, it was just the Chips bill, and we ha were having, a, shall we say, um, encouraging to, for it to go beyond chips, because chips are very important. Semiconductor is very important, but it's about the here and now as we go forward in the near future. The science part is about the future, the future, the future, and uh, science, science, and science, research, education, expanding the, uh, the diversity and inclusion of many more people, uh, making scientific decisions, and learning about it, and teaching us about it as well as doing so in every corner of the country. You know what it does? It lowers costs for consumers. It creates 100,000 good paying union jobs, reduces U.S. dependence on foreign manufacture as it brings chips manufacturing home, as Denny always says, make it in America, uh, which is a national security priority as well as an economic necessity, turbocharges American uh, innovation really powering our preeminence on both research and next generation technology. I want to salute Eddie Bernice Johnson, the chair of the Science, Space and Technology Committee. She got much of, not all, but a good deal of her bill's bipartisan uh, legislation into the, the package and Frank Pallone doing the chips piece of this in a very effective way and as well as um, 100,000 prevailing wage jobs, Bobby Scott, Richie Neal. I could go on and on about all of the members of our chairs who played such an important role and all of our members who did so as well. And I just want to tell you a couple more things about it. Um, it ensures that CHIPS funding comes with strong guardrails against corporate profiteering. It secures provisions to diversify the innovation workforce so our best minds can power our technologies of the future, and including it in our legislation to drive decades of discovery with important money, strong investments, National Science Foundation, office at the D Department of uh, Energy, and NIST. And now, we, I enrolled it outside in front of with the backdrop of the Washington Monument, our, uh, our tribute to our founders who were committed to the future. That's what this legislation honors, and we send it on uh, to the president. That was pr that's pretty exciting for us. We had. Um, I'm excited today because for a long time now I have wanted to reinstate the uh, assault weapon ban. Uh, you weren't here. Maybe you weren't even born when we did this in the 90s. It was uh, hard, but it happened, and it saved lives. And I'm looking forward to uh, having a good, uh, the, the passage of it this afternoon. When I talk about it on the floor this afternoon, I'm going to show, I'm going to show a, a, a presentation of what some totally irresponsible people are putting out there about little children, toddlers, learning how to use an assault weapon, smaller assault weapons, but a gun like mommy and daddy small assault weapons, but getting their muscles ready to be able to use it. Is that sick? Anyway, we're hopeful that on our vote on the assault weapon ban and the outcry for it in the country, I think the best, most important thing to do is to have background checks. That probably saves the most lives on the ongoing, but a very, a co with that, very important as to eliminate the to reinstate, we like to say reinstate because we did pass this before and it did, and it did save lives. 
We take an oath of office to protect and defend, to protect and defend our Constitution, the American people, making our community safe. Our Democrats are committed uh, to having strong support for our law enforcement and our first responders. We want to, we, I'm, I'm so proud to announce that uh, as of late last night, we've come to um, uh, terms in terms of how we support our, our law enforcement and do so uh, with, with accountability. I have to pay tribute to uh, Joyce Beatty, the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, uh, to Josh Gottheimer, who really has been a leader on this issue, and Abigail Spanberger, she had, she had a bill too, and they found a way to do what we want to support our men and women in uniform, but to also do so with accountability. Uh, since we talked about a, a security package, though, we've been flooded with so many bills that people have, so we need to, sh shall we say, we have to have the bandwidth to deal with all of them and hopefully, not hopefully, we plan to bring those uh, support for our men and women in, uh, men and women in law enforcement uh, with accountability uh, to the floor in the second week of August when we come back. That is what I think will comply with, conform to when the Senate may be ready to send us uh, the, um, the very important legislation whose title is Inflation Reduction Act. So we're very excited about the fact that we have a breakthrough there. It isn't everything we want. How, how many times have I said that? You cannot judge something for what it doesn't do, but respect it for what it does. And what this does do is quite remarkable in terms of our investments in protecting the planet. It lowers, health, in addition to which, it lowers health care cost with the subsidies that are uh, extended for three years in the bill, as well as to have, um, for the first time, historic, historic opportunity for the, sec the uh, Secretary of HHS to negotiate for lower prescription drug prices. Prescription drugs, drug, the cost of prescription drugs is a kitchen table issue in our country. And this legislation uh, will reduce that cost, but also give people, give people hope and part of our lower cost. We're always saying safer communities, lower cost. Uh, again, uh, We'll bring this legislation to the floor, uh, the, the public safety bills, but and at the time when we have the the legislation coming over uh, from the Senate. Uh, in that inflation and in inflation reduction package, you know what it is: lowers cost of health care for millions, slashes prescription drug prices, historic historic action to. Um, combat the climate crisis and lowers energy costs and advances energy security. Again, it does what we want to do to fight inflation by lowering costs. It's fully paid for and no new taxes, as President Biden has said, for families making under $400,000 a year. We had, I talked with a great enthusiasm and excitement about the advancement we're making in our preparing legislation, passing legislation, and the rest. As we speak here right now on the floor, we're addressing drought and, and fires. And, and as a Californian, as a Westerner, um, this is very, very important legislation for many, for everyone in our country, but in particular, we benefited from the intellectual resource that our Western members are on this. But we had a sad thing happen, and that was when the Senate failed to pass the PACT Act. How do you explain how 80% of the Republicans in the United States Senate said no, said no to our veterans? Every time we're acting, and I just had, a, last week I had my regular meeting with the veteran service organizations, and I always promise them, and we try to honor that promise by acting always in a bipartisan way so they don't have to get involved in one decision or other. We have our differences of opinion as to allocation of resources, but to do so in the most bipartisan way. And the PACT Act is a very bipartisan bill. Eighty-some senators voted for it the first time it came on the floor there. That they would vote against that when people are waiting, people are dying, people are sick because they were exposed to these burn pits, and huge burn pits. If you don't know about them, read about them because they're deadly. 
in addition to which, if you live in North Carolina or served at Camp Lejeune, anyone in your family, you will know that the water there is deadly. And not only for the service member, but for their families who may live there with them. And that is covered in this legislation. So for them to say, well, we're not going to vote for it because you've come to an agreement on the, the um, reconciliation, as we, they were calling it, is so ridiculous. Wait a minute. You're not going to help our veterans because we want to lower the cost of prescription drugs, because we want to lower the cost of, um, of health care, because we want to protect the planet. Of course, you don't agree with any of those things, but would you use that to vote against our veterans? It's, it's really immoral, almost criminal, because these people were exposed and they, and you know, I've been on this issue since Agent Orange for a long time. And the sooner that we can do this, the healthier our veterans will be. As I said yesterday at our rally, when in the military we say we, on the battlefield we leave no soldier behind, and when they come home we leave no veteran behind. But the Republicans in the Senate did just that by 80% of them voting no. Isn't that unbelievable? And actually, when the bill passed in the Senate the first time, it had 84 votes. Anyway. People over politics, you know, our, our democratic uh, communications and po policy, uh, democratic policy and communications committee put forth our agenda, our for the people agenda, people over politics. We're very excited about that. Uh, it too has three things that lower cost, uh, it, again, safer communities and um, better jobs. And that's what we are about. Uh, in any event, it's a comparison to what the Republicans are doing. In contrast, the MAGA Republicans are criminalizing women's health care, planning to end Social Security and Medicare. Don't take it from me. Read their stuff. Attacking democracy undermining the right to vote. So we think we have a clear contrast in terms of why we are here, what our why is, and how we go forward. Any questions? Okay. Since we talked baseball last night. We talked baseball last night. We talked policy and legislation. Okay. I'm with you. <laughs> so on this reconciliation package, mm -hmm. it seems as though, you know, you have a push to try to get something done before August might be problems getting this through the Senate. Do you feel like some of your members might say, here we are, we're on the hook again, if they can't get this through the Senate, even though Senator Manchin is on board, but there's other issues there, and also just having the numbers to pass the bill for COVID, and how does that translate to winning in November? So you want to talk politics? Well, but, 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 but yeah. obviously... Well, let, let me just say, people. our purpose is to meet the needs of the American people. I, you have to talk to the Senate about the dynamic over there vis -vis in regard to this bill. Uh, I, it is, shall we say, not everything that I want. I mean, not even close, not even half. But nonetheless, what is in there is very good. Historic. First time HHS secretary can negotiate for lower prescription drug prices. Not as big as I would like, but it's in the door historic in terms of not in the three-year um, uh, three-year extension of the subsidies the Affordable Care Act is strengthening the Affordable Care Act fabulous and by the way I want it more that is to say I want the Medicaid piece and the rest of that but that doesn't mean that we don't support the bill but probably the biggest difference although those are substantial for kitchen table issues is what it does in terms of climate you may recall that when I was speaker the first time, climate was my flagship issue. Cause, and we put established a committee, we passed legislation, all of that. So this is of the highest uh, importance because it's about the children. It's about the future. It is a short fuse that we are on. The thermal management of the planet is greatly at risk. Uh, the, it was, the rising sea levels, the encroachment of deserts, the uh, so many things that are happening in communities uh, that they have to move. So it's a health issue, clean air, clean water. It's a, a, a 
economic issue, preeminence in the green technologies in the world. It's a security issue because the encroachment, all of these uh, impacts of climate, the climate crisis uh, uh, cause competition and conflict over resources and habitat and the national security people come into us and say this is a security issue and of course it's a values issue. So this for us, when, when I learned of what was in there was just transformational. We've never spent this much money, even as much as we had originally. We've never invested this much in such an important way, uh, in a public-private way, to have the private sector play its role in this so we get more advantage than is just right there. So it is, um, it was, it's beautiful to behold, and I feel pretty confident. Do you think that your strength is bringing people along again if they stop? You said you can't worry about the yeah, and, we, and when they send it to us, we'll pass but it. But you're confident that's going to happen. Yeah. They're going to get it. Yeah. Jake? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma on the uh, police funding bill, I, I, I realize that Democrats can now say that we actually fund the police, but it, the thing that this would be contingent on them funding the police, No, it's real police funding. It's police funding with accountability. Uh, it's police funding with accountability. We be, feel very proud of the compromises that were made and uh, uh, with, that, with much discussion on the other side of the aisle and people outside. So that's what I have to say about that. Jake? Are you confident you'll get the assault weapons ban through today? Yeah. You are? Yeah. Next. <laughs> Yeah. Quote, Here I am, Nancy Pelosi, saying this country needs a strong Republican yes. party, not a cold. How does that square with your party now spending money to boost election-denying candidates in Republican primaries, including against House Republicans who voted uh, to impeach President Trump? Look, I said that we need a strong Republican party, not a cult of personality. That didn't mean we shouldn't have a strong Democratic party as well and the political decisions that are made out there are made uh, in furtherance of our winning the election because we think the contrast between Democrats and Republicans as they are now is so drastic that we have to, we have to win. And I feel confident win. I just see, what is it, what's that called? The six points, 44 to, what's it called, the poll? George has it, no. Yeah. Well, anyway, the most recent poll that came out has us 44 to 38. This whole thing has changed. But uh, make no mistake, I've said to you, we have every intention of winning this election. As uh, people make judgments in campaigns around the country, that's that. But it has, uh, uh, it has nothing to do with whether we should have a strong, grand old party, which has done great things for our country. Well, yes? Speaker, yes. Well, I don't ever talk about my travel because, as some of you know, it's a security issue. It's a security issue for every member of Congress traveling, especially abroad. But for the Speaker, it is an additional uh, security issue, and for those traveling with me, not just members, but staff, et cetera. The um, President earlier, well, earlier in his term, talked about a strong emphasis on the Asian Pacific. Uh, he, he has visited there, the uh, Vice President's visit there, the Secretary of Commerce and others, and uh, we want the Congress of the United States to be part of that initiative. Of course, as a West Coast person, we see the Pacific as there are, you know, that's our, their home. We're part of that as well. That is not to diminish the importance of our uh, transatlantic relationships as well. But I, it's, it's, we're, I'm very excited, if, should we go uh, to the countries that we're, we, you'll be hearing about along the way, uh, about how the, the conversations we have now. Earlier this year, a couple months ago, I guess it was, we had nine leaders of the ANSEAN, uh, the Southeast Asian 
uh, countries and at the House to, uh, was bipartisan. In fact, we invited some of the Senate to come and some participated to have a conversation, hear their presentations and relate. Uh, another symbol, the president had that ASEAN uh, meeting in Washington, D.C., and we were very much a part of it. So again, we have global responsibilities, uh, whether it comes to three things, I always say, security, economy, and governance. And th this will be part of that. That's it. Thank you all. You told me last night there was going to be a comeback in the ball game. What happened? You said you said it ain't over till it's over. It's over. So your comment on the ball game? The rain didn't interfere long enough. <laughs> you were losing though. It was a regulation game. Four innings in a seven inning game is a regulation game. <laughs> I, I was told. Wait, wait, let me just say this one thing. Did you see the trophy? This trophy puts the Stanley Cup, Morrison, the uh, Lombardi, you name any of them. This thing is gigantic. Have you seen it? Oh, yes. It looks like you have won the World Series, the Super Bowl, Stanley Cup, <laughs> name something else, the World Cup. There it is. So I congratulate the Republicans. It's a ball game. It's fun. Thank <laughs> you.